We move $10 trillion around the world every day in 120 currencies and 160 countries. We bank America's largest multinational corporations around the world, bank other banks, insurance companies, the World Bank, IMF. With such a resume, when Jimmy Diamond, CEO of America's largest bank, JP Morgan Chase, speaks, we need to listen. Every year, he writes a letter to the shareholders of his company, and Warren Buffett recommends reading that letter more than his own. And that's exactly what I did. Going through all the 60 pages where Jimmy Diamond talks about JP Morgan Chase, banking, politics, and more. But there's one thing that I want to focus on today. And that's what's on page 18. The market is so focused about the short term that it is getting something extremely wrong about the long term. You know, I don't worry about the weather. And I honestly, I don't spend a lot of time guessing about the economy. I mean, that, that to me is, is the sunny or rainy. Or, I don't worry about that. According to Jamie Diamond, there are two major uncertainties in the world today. And both of these will have a common effect on the economy and eventually, of course, on the stock market. There are two things which are extraordinary today, which may have different outcomes and think of them as storm clouds. We don't know if they're going to hit, when they're going to hit, what they're going to do. The first uncertainty is geopolitical. He writes that we are entering the most treacherous period in the world's history since World War II. It is definitely true with the ongoing war in Ukraine and Israel and also the rise of China as a potential superpower challenging the leadership of America. The second uncertainty is economical. We have unprecedented government spending and deficit, along with fiscal stimulus and quantitative tightening, the effects of which we don't know yet in the long term. According to Jamie Diamond, both of these uncertainties are going to lead to higher inflation over the long term. And this is what the market gets wrong. Over the past three years, inflation rate peaked to 9% and then it fell to around 3% today. The market is pretty happy about it and it shows. If we look at the tips treasury break-even rate for 5 years or even 10 years, it is around 2.4%. Tips is treasury inflation protected securities. These are bonds that are protected by inflation. So the yield on those bonds are inflation adjusted. In other words, the 2.4% break-even rate that we are seeing today. This is the expected inflation rate for the next five years. It's around the same for the next 10 years. According to Jamie Dimon, it is very likely that we have a second round of higher inflation. This year, commodities are already outperforming stocks. Oil, copper, and agricultural commodities are already on the rise again. A prolonged war in the Middle East will certainly keep oil prices higher for longer. And when this is coupled with the crisis in the Swiss Canal and also in the Panama Canal, we have drought now, this will lead to higher shipping rates. Inflation has a runaway effect. If you are an American company, you've ordered your products from China, now there are higher commodity prices, higher shipping rates, eventually this is going to be passed on to the end consumer, that is the American public, and this leads to even higher inflation. So inflation leads to more inflation. That's why it is so easy for inflation to get out of control. With the US government creating so much money, printing so much money, taking so much debt with high deficit, this leads to a second type of inflation, monetary inflation. Today, we are not really going to talk about the different types of inflation, but what's important is that the effects on the end consumer, on the American, the average American, is the same. Your standard of living, how you used to live in the past, it's not the same anymore. There are many things that you cannot afford anymore. It doesn't really matter whether your dollar is losing its value because of monetary inflation or prices are just rising. The effects are the same and it is a negative effect. That's where the Fed, the Federal Reserve System has to act. In order to stop inflation, it has to raise interest rates. Here the market thinks that the Federal Reserve System is going to cut interest rates this year and eventually over the long term when the market looks forward in five years how much interest rate is going to be according to the market it's going to be around 3.5 percent but jamie diamond disagrees he prepared for higher rates and slower seven percent are we really going there and, well, and how i don't is know that when i said five percent they said are we going there yeah it's possible can it go to seven percent the answer is yes eight percent he reiterated in the letter that we should be prepared for interest rates to up to 8%. You definitely need to read the whole letter if you are a shareholder of JP Morgan Chase like me, or maybe just you are a fan boy of Jimmy Diamond. Wait, did we just have a continuity error? It takes several days to make a good video. Now is the right time to smash the like button. Jamie Diamond writes that the market is expecting with a 70 to 80% probability that we are going to have a soft landing. That is, 
slow decline in inflation and interest rates, which is the best case scenario for the economy for the average person. But his expectations are much lower than that. While the market is focused on short-term data, it forgets to take into consideration the long-term effects of whatever is happening in the economy today. He's right because the higher inflation that we saw in 2021-2022 were largely because of the money printing that has been going on for over a decade. It's not really because of the pandemic. The pandemic made things worse, but the Fed would have had much more control over inflation if let's say interest rates were at 5%. They don't have to cut to zero again. They don't need to print money through quantitative easing. Higher interest rates is of course not good for stocks because everything is discounted at a higher rate. Usually the method that Warren Buffett uses is that he discounts everything at the 10 year rate. So today, let's say it's around 4%. So he's discounting everything at 4%. Let's say interest rates rises to 10%. He has to discount everything at 10%, which means that stocks are going to be priced lower. And it makes sense because when interest rates are higher, Bonds are better investments than stocks. So why should you invest in stocks when you can buy bonds which are pretty safe compared to stocks? Does this mean that if Gemini Money is telling us that we will see interest rates at 8%, should we sell all our stocks and just invest in bonds? Actually, no. Because Jimmy Diamond is prepared even for 2% interest rates. We are prepared. We can handle 7%. We can handle 2% again. 8%? Yeah, we can handle that too. Nobody knows how much interest rates is going to be in one year or in five years, where the stock market is going to be in one year or in five years, or even tomorrow or even next month. Nobody knows anything about that. This reminds me of this scene from The Wolf of Wall Street. Number one rule of Wall Street. Nobody. I don't care if you're Warren Buffett or if you're Jimmy Buffett. Nobody knows if the stock is going to go up, down, sideways, or in circles, least of all stockbrokers. Mm -hmm. right? It's all a fugazi. This is what Jimmy Diamond does do. Risk management is not the same thing as guessing the future. Mm -hmm. When risk management looking at the range of potential outcomes and being able to say to yourself, we can handle this, we can handle this, we don't really expect it, and we can handle the in-between. He looks at all possible outcomes, not just one number. The market likes to focus on one number. What is the expectation for next week? What is the expectations for one year, for 10 years? It can be about inflation numbers, it can be about interest rates, it can be about uh, the S&P 500 itself. But we, as good investors, we need to look at a range of possibilities because everything can happen. And we need to prepare our portfolio for this by investing in companies with good fundamentals. We run the company to serve clients through thick and thin. And of course, take a margin of safety. You should also know which companies to avoid, like this one, have a nice day and goodbye.